Hello, everyone. Welcome. And Caroline said I was the break between all of these amazing, fast, one-minute pitches. So I'm going to try to be sort of a break and not fill too much information in one place. But at the same time, uh, we do have quite a lot of important work to talk about. So Benetech is an organization based in California. And we do technology, but we do technology for good. We're an NGO, a nonprofit, and yeah, our yeah, yeah. work is in really three areas, and that is in human rights, in poverty alleviation, and largest and most importantly, in education and literacy. Yeah. And really everything yeah. we do Sorry? hits three important areas, inclusion, equity, and justice. That's what we do, and we use software to get there. And being in California, we are in Silicon Valley, so we actually are software developers. We work with large for-profit tech companies as partners, and we also work with the social sector, nonprofits, disability groups. So we're often kind of a bridge between these different sectors that sometimes talk to each other very well, and sometimes you know a little translation is needed. I want to focus on our biggest service, and it's one that um, we are doing a lot of work on around the world, and it's called Bookshare. Bookshare is the largest accessible library in the world, and we serve people that are blind, uh, have low vision, dyslexia, or mobility impairment that keep them from being able to read regular books effectively. Now, I don't know if any of you saw the youth panel, but at least two, maybe three of the great folks that were on there talking about how much they need better access to education are people we would serve. And we would serve somebody like Konstantinos who has dyslexia and who there's a lot of stigma attached, he said. Bookshare, you can read your book on a mobile phone. Look like every other kid reading your book on a mobile phone. And that's important, and that's one of the things that we do. And uh, we have over 500,000 titles, so over half a million titles available worldwide. And with more and more being added due to the Marrakesh Treaty for global book books that was just uh, passed and ratified, and it's adding countries every day. This is important because, in addition, we have over 900 publishers adding books every day to Bookshare. Books that were published today going to Amazon, we will have in the Bookshare library today. And that's also important about school books. So how do we get school books in is we actually work with publishers of those books and we work with education systems and say, what are the books your students need for class and make sure that they have them on day one, not weeks after all the other students. So I think this is a very important area. And people ask, well, these books, what are they, what formats? Well, every book in Bookshare is available in audio, in text, in text plus audio, in large print, in braille, electronic braille, as well as even things like Microsoft Word. We're working with libraries around the world that I'll talk about in a few more minutes, um, and, and working with groups that provide reading tools. So many, many groups, many organizations provide tools that read books on mobile phones, on computers, on specialized devices, and we work with at least 50 groups that I know of. So we're very happy to work with groups all around the world. This is at scale. We have delivered over 15 million books through Bookshare. Actually, I think this is a little outdated. I think we're close to 16 million now. And we have 700,000 users in 80 countries. And people say, well, you're from the US. Your books must all be in English. Actually, we have 47 languages. And some of those languages, there aren't very many books. So one of the important things we need to do is work with partners in countries to make sure that Bookshare and your libraries that you already have are joined up and that we can make sure that we have all books accessible. Now, one of the ways that we do that is we work with organizations and say, you know what, let's join those libraries, but 
Why have it say Bookshare? Why have it be in English? Have it be in your local language? I'm showing on the screen an example from Nepal, where we have a, a Bookshare library in Nepal, and the front end is all in Nepalese, and essentially, anyone in Nepal can access, and then if they're qualified with those disabilities I talked about, they can actually download books that we have put in and also that partners in Nepal have added. So it's very important, we, you know, we could have a million books, but it's the books that you need in your language, in your schools that are the most important for any person. The other thing is, it's very good, Bookshare is at scale, we're doing a lot of work, but that's not good enough. That's not good enough for the future. The future is every book that is born digital should be born accessible. And part of the work that uh, we are doing, and we're working with partners around the world, is working with publishers directly to do a, a certification, to say, you know what, if, if it passes these tests, it gets certified as accessible, and then when a school is out buying textbooks, they'll know whether or not they're buying an accessible book. And if there are two textbooks that are very similar, and one is certified and one is not, Maybe they could buy the certified one and have the same book for all of their students. So this is a really important, important area of work that is, uh, I think, just picking up and it will take some time to get all the publishers going around the world, but it's, it's a movement that we're really working hard on. Um, I'm happy to say that uh, we have, just to go back to that, we have publishers now competing with each other around who can be more accessible. So, at the CSUN conference coming up next month in California, actually, there will be, I think, I think two more got added. It's six or eight publishers who will get on a stage and try to be the best, most accessible books. And these are very large global publishers. So, I, I would never have thought that was possible five years ago, and now it's happening. So, it's very exciting. There are other areas, though. You can read words and make them accessible. That's fantastic. But what about math? Math, science, I, I'm an engineer. I think every child that wants to be an engineer should be an engineer. And right now, if you're blind, you're often told, eh, no, you can't do that, because you can't do the math and science. Well, let's change that. Let's change that and make math and science fully accessible for every child around the world so that they can not just read a nice novel, but actually also do math. There are many students that struggle with math, right? It's, it is people with disabilities, without disabilities, um, and it's a wide group. Uh, it also turns out that in many countries, as in the US, where you're using online learning platforms, how do you do your math and show your work in algebra online? Well, we have a new tool for that. It's called MathShare, and it's all about how you can do online learning in math, fully accessible. We've worked with uh, users with intellectual disabilities as well as visual impairments and a whole wide range of learning disabilities. And we're still testing this. This is a newer one, um, but we would welcome you to absolutely you know, check it out as well and really give feedback too as we, as we look at the best ways to make doing math accessible to all. Finally, how do you access education? Right? So this is all about education and we provide tools, but if the child is not even allowed in the classroom, they can't use those tools. So another area of work that is in conjunction with our human rights work we've done for many years is something we call data for inclusion. And it's really about working with people, working with individuals, working with disabled persons organizations, working with large international NGOs around how do we help get more data and more stories about people's actual experiences. Like, again, the youth that we just heard a little while ago. Wow, people should actually hear what their experiences have been. And wouldn't it be great if when organizations are collecting information about what's happening in the real world, when they're talking about the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, that they hear some of those stories. And that is, so that's a, a big area that we're embarking on, uh, starting right now with some work in Bangladesh and Kenya. So this is something that is starting fully uh, outside the US, and I'm very proud to be working first, actually, in developing countries. Um, so with that, 
I'm actually complete and want to say a big thank you. And I hope this was a break, kind of. Okay. <laughs> well, first, yes, big round of applause. Thank you, thank Nancy. You.